uh, something, something, cars, family. Anyway, hey everybody, this is uh, Retro Care Retro Reviews, doing a slightly delayed, but still in time, I guess, uh, depending on whenever you see this next week, uh, for uh, F9, the uh, Fast Saga, or F9, or I'm going to be calling it uh, just plain old Fast 9. Uh, however you want to say it, this ninth entry in the Fast and the Furious franchise, uh, it was a little long overdue, weird as it sounds. Um, yeah, getting to the business side of it, I have watched most of these movies in preparation. I actually did a review of uh, Hobbs and Shaw when it was new. I think when I was doing the uh, Skull Inspired characters, I could be wrong, so card that. Uh, that's where my bases are. As for retro reviews, I haven't really done any actual, um, look back at the first three movies. Um, depending, uh, how much I want to talk about a certain character that came back that the trailers gave away, like, over a year ago before the pandemic. Um, yeah, I might, I might talk about Tokyo Drift and uh, I think the movie, uh, related to it, Better Look Tomorrow, um, when it comes to Han. Anyway, plot is pretty simple. I'm, I'm not gonna be, uh, sugarcoating this. It's pretty freaking obvious. It's just one big retcon to get John Cena into the franchise. And turns out, uh, again, if this is your first time watching any of these Fast uh, Furious movies, uh, spoilers, I guess, for the rest of this review. Uh, how I usually work on my channel uh, for stuff like this is very uh, sporadic, meaning sometimes I'll talk about non spoilers, sometimes I'll try to give you ahead of time, I'll try to like get the chapters back on that um, for my video for this review's sake. Anyway, uh, Justin Lin comes back to direct this. He did, I think, the majority of the franchise since uh, Tokyo Drift. However, I don't think he has anyone um, that was previously associated with the franchise helping out writing this time around. Uh, I think Daniel Casey, Casey, if I got it right. Um, yeah, he was mostly known for Ken and some you know indie uh, film stuff. So he is coming up there um, and stuff like that, which is not bad for that kind of thing. And you could tell that he wanted to make more drama focused in weird ways so again spoilers ahead i'm just mainly gonna remember most of the broad strokes of all the weird shit that happens in, in nine and believe it or not going to space is the least of their weirdness i wish i was kidding <laughs> anyway uh so if, for anyone who's been watching this franchise from afar and realizes it kind of sucks sometimes true believe me I, i'm with you 100 percent back before i want to say i guess fast five or six when they finally got their shit together um, I'm not kidding, when 5 and 6 dropped, it felt like, okay, we can actually do the spy stuff, okay, we can actually do modern action stuff, and then 7 comes in, is like a great exit point for anyone who's still ride or die with the franchise, and it's like, okay, it's a good send-off to Paul Walker, and again, coming, when, when it comes to like 8 and 9, if you think that's weirder than what you saw prior, go ahead, use 7 as your exit point, uh, now I said exit point, not entry point, uh, depending where you saw this franchise when it was new, um, a good 20 years ago good lord <laughs> anyway um in my family's case we saw the first three films uh on dvd we didn't really go to the theaters and saw it i think five or four is when i finally saw these things in theaters yeah probably four uh yeah i, I don't know i mean like four was trying to really like still have its grounded like crime roots but then it just didn't really go anywhere it had one over the top thing that the franchise will be known for as time goes on but yeah uh, again, I haven't really talked the plot yet, because it kind of speaks for itself, but the highlights of the plot is basically Tyrese, uh, oh god, it's been a while, sorry, uh, Roman's just basically saying, okay, are we guys just, like, superheroes now, or what? Like, I, I'm, like, he, he literally had to go, it was, go into, look into all of his bullet written shirts, uh, like, early in the first act, like, no, these things are lit up with, like, AK rounds and everything, and I ain't got no scratch, like, what the fuck's going on here? Uh, and you thought that was a really cool joke just to get the, like, the basic, you know, like, casual, like, questions of the franchise out of the way. No, that becomes Roman's subplot throughout the entire movie, I shit you not. Uh, and apparently he used that to justify, I guess, accepting that they do weird shit and, and he's just cool with it now. Ludacris and, uh, sorry, Tej and, uh, Ramsey are, like... Yeah, he, he, we don't know. We, we're just we're just lucky, honestly. Also, for Ramsey's actress, Nat Natalie uh, Namil, I hope I got your name right. Sorry for that. Uh, you picked a hell of a franchise to stay stick with after uh, uh, Game of Thrones. No jokes aside. So yeah, Song Kang, uh, Han. How the hell did he come back? They don't kind of explain it. I mean, yes, but no. You get a maybe. You get a maybe. That, that, that's as best as I could say, non spoilers wise. Actually, wise, uh, Mr. Nobody, Kurt Russell's character, was slightly mentioned, uh, sort of kidnapped, sort of not, uh, 
details of that uh, go to yourself on on i guess if there's a spoiler uh reddit post i'll probably leave a link to that or google it yourself if uh it's out there uh hella mirren um wow queenie uh that was her name shit uh she had a really decent action scene helping out with uh, further detail and stuff now on to dom himself oh my god <laughs> The whole thing, uh, for beginning to end, was nothing but flashbacks, uh, in Vin's case to try to justify, or in this case, retcon, again, John, John Cena's Jacob into the whole fray, as far as being in the Toronto family. Uh, right away, on the opening credits, you can see that they really want to, like, make us believe that he always had, like, this weird Batman detective vision thing for, like, car accidents since the jump, since, like, 89 at least. I'm not kidding. And... Also, not kidding, he had to do that again when, whatever you saw later in the trailers when he went underwater, uh, when an action scene went wrong on his end. I, I hate to be, like, my only criticism when it comes to this movie is try, stop trying to make Dom vulnerable. I, I can see on a psychological scale you could kind of do that, like, is he doing it for the right reasons? Is he doing it to keep his, his son alive? By the way, little Brian barely mentioned and so is actual brian yeah two movies in a row they're kind of gun shy on basically killing off brian due to what happened with paul walker and everything which again is understandable on the first movie after your biggest thing that got you a billion dollars i understand two movies in a row now i don't really know and uh, if you're wondering why i'm not talking about charlie saron's uh cypher she doesn't really do a lot uh if any of you saw some of the late reviews before this movie came out yes she is in the box for a while won't exactly how she got into the box, but she does do some drone stuff like you probably saw in the trailer also. So again, Broad Strokes is there, but yeah, uh, kind of funny podcast I think also mentioned, uh, yeah, they did their entire uh, review so far, actually podcast so far of uh, F9, so card of that, as always. And uh, yeah, they're trying to figure out how the hell she went to the bathroom thing. It's like, it's like glass, oh, God, I'm trying to remember the stupid thriller I used to watch. Uh, like a glass house kind of like um like uh box trapment uh also there is technically a villain that isn't just jacob but all i can see with this guy is he looks like a guy pierce want to be standing for like any flashbacks he wants to do for the next prometheus or aliens movie again he kind of looks like that if i could get his name down below in the imdb if not as usual cast imdb for this movie uh so yeah uh for han in general, he looks great. Um, Song Kang definitely, uh, you can tell that they, 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 without, like, the cool hair he had from Tokyo Drift, you give him, like, a normal shortcut like me, you can definitely tell aging is happening. And speaking of Tokyo Drift, yes, you're not, uh, if anyone got most of the rumors right, uh, yeah, Lucas Black is in this movie as well as, uh, Gaijin or whatever the hell who was the, I think it was, damn it, I forgot the kid's name. Uh, sorry, guy's name. The guy's like in his 40s. Oh, Jesus, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, it's all up to the soon-to-be retro review of Tokyo Drift. Yes, I'm buried in the lead. I really want to do it in honor of uh, not only, you know, 20th anniversary of, of uh, Fast in the Fast Series, but 15th anniversary for Tokyo Drift. Yes, that movie just turned 15, I think, last week, maybe earlier. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so in his case, uh, for Lucas Black's guy, Gene, sorry, uh, he's basically uh, a pilot after Tokyo Drift. Like, he just gave up the whole street cred thing and said, you know, it's great, let's just, just fly planes and just, oh, I don't know, strap rockets to a Pontiac Fiero and just said, yeah, we can do this. Yeah, we can totally take it to space. Totally. Oh, totally. Right up until they were doing the simulations right as when they were strapping them for the third act. Um, I won't go into the broad strokes of most of the action scenes. You guys see it yourself. Some of them are actually good. Some of them are pretty casual. I know saying that for this series alone. Um, for the magnets uh, that you saw in the trailers, they were very used creatively for the third act very well. It was like, uh, I guess if I have to put it in, like, uh, Paranger's terms, like, think of, like, their usual NOS as them morphing out, morphing up and stuff like that, and them using NOS is, like, them going in either, like, SWAT mode, if it's, like, SPD, or, I guess, Battleizer for, like, uh, Rev Rangers and stuff like that. That's kind of what I feel like with the Magnets. I, I don't think it's going to be around for, like, another movie or two. If that's the case, that'd be cool. Then again, it's more like uh, going to their heist-like roots. Like, there's... A lot of homages to previous movies, to even, like, uh, character actors that wasn't really that big until later on. Oh, God, I'm blanking on this guy's name. But he was in Joker uh, nowadays, but back then he was, like, just known for Borowak Emperor. And the only reason why they brought him back was uh, mainly because he was in the fourth movie. I wish I was kidding. Um, what I can say about the fourth movie is that it has decent transitions. Weird as it sounds. Again, 
it sounds like I'm broad stroking most of the movies, but that's kind of where I am uh, with this franchise. You need to know a lot of movies coming in. Not a whole lot. You don't need to know the first three if you have to. Just Tokyo Drift and maybe four and five, and then you get the gist from there. Uh, no Rock because they still have beef. Yeah, another publicly known thing about this franchise is that basically the cast always have it in for each other whenever The Rock and like Statham shows up. And that animosity must have shown off uh, in a certain mid-cred. Again, like I said, this is now full spoilers for just the, the, the post-creds. So again, if anything, please do yourself a favor, watch it in theaters, or wait till it comes out on Peacock or Netflix or whatever down the road. That being said, uh, there's not really much about the mid-cred other than, I guess, they're teasing around to with uh, Statham's uh, character and uh, Han. And honestly, I'm all for it. I'm all for ha a Shaw and, and Han, like, I guess, a uh, sequel to the Hobbs and Shaw spinoff. That would be cool, honestly. Um, but then I get around to, like, quick action scene would be nice just to, like, get it out of the way for the trailers for Fast 10. Or whatever the hell they're going to be calling these things for the next two movies. Yeah, another thing about this franchise, they have a very funny way of just, like, one-upping themselves, even down to the title. So, again... As weird as it sounds, this franchise is basically the closest I think American audiences myself would be getting to like the weird over the top spectacle like Bollywood action movies are trying to get. I know it's a weird comparison, but with the Fast series, it kind of makes sense. Um, so my overall for the movie, uh, now with the spoilers out of the way, um, I, I still say go see it. Um, it's very average uh, as far as the stunts go, as far as like the action goes. Um, again, the storylines are weirder than usual. Like I said with Vin, he has to basically go into predator detective mode to gaslight himself into just being cool with Jacob now. And Jacob also, uh, again, my bad for the spoilers at this point for the rating, uh, he does turn face, proving once again as a avid semi Cena hater, he really can't stay heel for too long, <laughs> even in movies. Yeah, the fact that he got him as a villain long enough in, like, what was it, Bumblebee, is nothing short of a miracle, just saying for the writers there. Anyway, that all being said, uh, 7 out of 10, um, I'm not the only one that already got that kind of average rating. I think uh, Cosmonaut Variety Hour has a couple of videos uh, giving you um, some details of, like, how to handle the franchise as, like, a shonen anime. Not kidding, he did a video essay on that. Also, I'll leave a link to the channel so you can get his, uh, his, uh, his quickie on the whole uh, movie as a whole when it comes to F9. And uh, with that all being said, uh, as much as I'd love to say I'm going to go a quarter mile at a time, but how about right here to see my previous video discussing uh, the new Marvel Legends House of X line. Uh, over here, other hand here, too, when I was doing, I think, Mortal Kombat Conquest or Cyber 6. Again, the closest to, like, a Brian Tribute hoodie slash shirt he used to normally wear uh, to uh, sub my channel, the notification bell down below. And again, for most of the spoilers, I said, that's nothing compared to the barbecue. Shit went down on the barbecue. That's all you need to know, okay? That all being said, uh, I'm Retro Coverage Care Reviews. Uh, this is a decent franchise. Weird as it sounds, after, what, nine movies in, they finally got their groove. Weird as it sounds, I know, but that's Fast and Furious for you guys. Anyway, take care, subscribe, and... Uh, When's Fast 10? Seriously.